what's going on guys welcome to another video in today's video we're gonna talk about negotiations it's gonna look something like this if I was gonna go negotiate a deal with you and I sent you this video before I negotiated the deal with you um, a lot of people might think well now I know everything that this guy is gonna do so I have the upper hand when the truth is if you know exactly what I'm gonna do it actually gives me the upper hand then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you an update on recycling, so stay tuned till the end. Let's get into it. Today's video is going to be about negotiations. I've done very well at negotiations and in most cases I kind of use the same tactic over and over, which I hate to even call it a tactic, it's just kind of, it, it is what it is, it's the process. Um, one thing that you really need to understand is if you have a business and you're trying to negotiate, unfortunately the way the world works is people look at what options you have to de help determine what price they give you or what deal they give you because it's their intent to make as much money as possible. So if they think you have no options, then they're obviously going to give you a worse deal than if they think you have a lot of options. Okay, so that's gonna be the first tip I'm gonna give you is to understand your position. Like where are you negotiating from? The first business I ever sold, I, had all the leverage and all the power. I had a great business that I didn't want to sell. They wanted a business like mine in my area and we were like the premier person to buy. So every time we hit a sticking point, I could say, you know what, I didn't want to do this anyway. And all of a sudden they would usually give in. The second business I sold, I was negotiating from a very weak standpoint of, this wasn't a highly desirable business to be in. There wasn't a lot of buyers, and the buyers that were interested were not in the price point I needed. There was really only one buyer in the price point that I needed, so a lot of the times in the negotiations, I was giving in to things um, because I was like, you know, the position I'm negotiating from is not a great one, so I need to give a little bit because this is the best deal I have going and I gotta take it. So that's the first thing is kind of evaluate where am I negotiating from? What options are available? And how likely am I to um, succeed in a different route if I don't get this deal? Okay, so the second thing I would tell you is be the person that's setting the tone. I do this all the time. Um, you should think of it like this, like be the one to offer the first price, um, be be the one to set the rules. A lot of people think, I want the other person to um, offer the first price, I want the other person to take the lead, and then whatever they say, I'm just gonna say no, that's not gonna work. Whatever they say, doesn't matter. First time, nope, nope, mm -mm, nope, not gonna happen. And then, they'll get better and they'll get better and they'll get better. What I do is a little bit different. When I'm gonna negotiate with somebody, I first try to understand what they're capable of and why they would do that. So I look at what they do with some competitors and I say, oh wow, well they give this guy this price, they give this guy this price. Um, so they're capable of doing that kind of deal and how much business does this competitor do with them? And then I set the tone going into the, the initial talks um, and I remind them as we're talking about it. Um, like when I was negotiating our landfill deal, I knew that um, the landfill could get to a certain price and I didn't need them to get all the way there because I knew that I wasn't as big of a 
piece of business as some of the other guys that they were paying those prices, but I knew I could get in that ballpark. So from the initial conversation and every conversation we had after that, I just kind of politely reminded them like, hey, I'm trying to run a successful business here. And to make that happen, I have to have a price that's right here. And if you can get there, I think that's great. And I'll be a really, really good working partner. And if you can't, I, I understand. Um, and we have other options. So I set the tone right off. And then I kept reminding them of what the tone was as we went. I do this a lot in every negotiation because I'm trying to come off as a fair guy that wants to do a fair deal. When I do this, when I set the tone, when I get to the final negotiations and I walk in, there's really no conversations um, about the deal. It's more of like them just verifying or not verifying that they can do the deal I want. Um, and I see this a lot when I do deals, I go in and the, the, the final meeting is pretty short because the tone I've set is like, this is what it's gonna take to do a deal with me. And if you can do that, then let's do it. So when I go sit down with them on the final run, um, they might try to give me one last little, little deal to beat me up or something like that. But for the most part, um, I've made it very clear what I'll take and what I'll do and what I'm capable of doing. And a lot of times I just meet with them and they say, look, we can't get there or yeah, we, we can get there for sure, no problem. Okay, so that brings me to the next point, which is, be able to walk away. But be able to walk away because you have alternatives, not because you're like, I'm gonna walk, you know, and be able to walk away with leaving the door open. In my previous life, I owned a crude oil trading business. We had a lot of different areas and a lot of different places that we took oil, mainly to refineries. And a lot of times, I would go to a refinery or a refinery would come to me and we would start talking about the possibility of me bringing product into the refinery. And a lot of times they would give you a low number and this is because they think that you need them. So sometimes I might haul my oil three or four times as far just to prove to them that I don't need, I don't need to come into your refinery. Um, the position I am negotiating from is one of, I don't have to have you, even though the best scenario would be to go into the refinery, um, all the numbers have to line up, but I would walk away from the deal and then I would just leave the door open. I would say, look guys, um, those numbers don't work. If you can get to X, I'd be happy to do a deal with you. But for right now, like I'm, an, I'm not in a bind to do a deal. If, if you don't do a deal with me, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. It's working well. Um, but again, I'd love to I'd love to do a deal. That shouldn't be like a tactic. That should be the truth. Um, if you have to take something further away, but it still makes sense, you don't need that other deal. A lot of times when I'm making these deals, I negotiate with most of my cards on the table. I'm not trying to do anything like, you know, underhanded or, or sales mini or even fancy. I'm just making it clear that like, I don't have to do this deal. And if you wanna do this deal, I would love to, but it has to be on terms that make sense for me and you. Moving right along, the number four thing I would tell you when you're trying to negotiate a deal is to be patient. If you've done the first thing and you understand what position you're negotiating from and you've set the tone for the negotiations and you've done the third thing and you're willing to walk away or you have already walked away but left the door open, then the fourth thing is hard. Just be patient. A lot of people, they can't stand it. They, they start calling back and when you're negotiating, a lot of times it's just about like, is the deal dying or not? And on the other end of the deal, they're like, you know, I think they'll come around, let's give them a week or two. And then you call them up and they're in their mind, they're thinking, okay, he came around, he needs this deal. 
remember the whole message you're trying to send is I want to do a fair deal but I can walk away from this at any time so be very patient I have some deals that it was like eight or ten years before I got them done and I kept walking away from the table but at the end of the day I did get it done it was it was a huge huge really large huge valuable deal that helped me tremendously but I had to keep showing them I don't need you so the fifth and final thing that I will tell you when you're trying to negotiate is do a fair deal for everybody. You should push to get a really good deal for yourself, but you should also be an equitable partner and a fair partner to your counterparty because number one, that's just who you should want to be is somebody that can sleep at night. And But the other piece of that is your reputation. After 20 years of negotiating deals, I have a reputation as a very fair, honest person that shows a lot of integrity and a good working partner. So through this whole thing, I've tried to send the message that that's who I am. And then once we get to the point of the details of the deal, I show that that's who I am again. It's very important to do this because you're going to negotiate again and again and again. I've had deals where guys, the first time around, I had to do a deal with them and they kind of raked me over the coals. So I did the deal, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I will never do a deal with this person again unless I absolutely have to. And that's exactly what I did. As soon as I could find a deal that made sense with a working partner that I enjoyed working with and that I thought was fair and showed integrity, I got out of that one and went to the, to the deal that I liked and I didn't look back. Even I would have guys come back to me and offer me a better deal just to come back and I would say, you know, this other guy's a really good working partner and he put his best foot forward the first time and I haven't had any issues. So even though price-wise your deal might be a little bit better, I'd rather work with somebody that if I call them up and I explain a situation that they're going to work with me and I'm going to do the same with them. So protect your reputation, protect further negotiations by just doing a fair deal. Give a little bit if you have to, just do it right, get it done in a way that everybody's happy, put it behind you, and then try to build a bridge in that relationship and build a bridge for further negotiations. The funny thing about all the things I just told you is if I was gonna go negotiate a deal with you and I sent you this video before I negotiated the deal with you, um, a lot of people might think, well, now I know everything that this guy is going to do, so I have the upper hand. When the truth is, if you know exactly what I'm going to do, it actually gives me the upper hand. Because you would know going into this, I'm going to come in and try to do a fair deal. I'm going to let you know exactly what I need out of this deal up front, and then I'm going to remind you through the process exactly what I need. And if we can't get there, I'm going to walk away. So. I think it's very interesting that people, they try to, to kind of protect negotiations and, and you know, the playbook is secret when it actually helps you if they know exactly what you're trying to do, if you're going about it in a way that's very fair and shows a lot of integrity and you, you are able to build optionality in your choices so you can say, look, you guys seem like you're nice, whatever, um, I've got a deal I like better and the door's still open if you change your mind. Okay, so recycling update before I finish the video. If you've been following the channel, you would know that I put out several videos about a recycling program where we started from zero and we we're trying to scale it up to where it was just a sustainable program. When we first started, I contacted two local recycling centers to find out what they would charge me to bring in single stream recycling. One of them told me $95 a ton, and the other one told me about $55 a ton. By creating our own alternative in a sorting program and setting the tone of the negotiations, I'm happy to say that both of the recycling centers contacted us, and after some talks and negotiation, we now went from a position where we were gonna bring in single stream and pay up to $95 a ton, to now we are bringing in single stream and they are paying us to bring it in. So. It was just everything I said in this video. Um, 
I understood my position. I was negotiating from a position of strength. I set the tone um, and I reminded them of the goal that I had in mind and what it would take to do business with me. I walked away a couple of times in negotiations, but I left the door open. Um, I was friendly. And at the end of the day, um, I made a fair deal for everybody. This is a deal that they're doing with other people, so it wasn't unreasonable. So that's why I made this video about negotiations because this is what I do all the time, right? And you can do it in a way that you end up being a fair, like good working partner. If you find value in these or know somebody that would, please share it with them. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, turn the bell notifications on so you know when I make a video, and I'll see you in the next one.